Hello, everyone. So today we are going to be discussing one of the most commonly observed mistakes that students fall for uh, in GMAT CR assumptions. Okay, in fact, it kind of stretches to the entire assumptions family, but we are going to be focusing mainly on assumptions. Now, before we get any uh, deeper into uh, this video, uh, I just want to quickly point out that through these videos, we are targeting to resolve some of the most commonly observed pain points across all areas of GMAT. Today is assumptions and the other videos you'll see other pain points being addressed, be it in quant, be it in various areas of verbal. If you like these uh, videos and if you find them helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, uh, and even co commenting on the videos. Uh, we are a young and fast growing AI powered GMAT prep company. And the more you spread the word around uh, and every like subscribe really helps us grow and helps us keep making such videos for you uh, so that everyone is benefited and all GMAT as uh, aspirants can also be benefited from doing that. All right, so with that, let's get into it, yeah? So first off, let's understand what I mean by necessary and sufficient conditions, yeah? All right, guys. So <clears throat> the best way to understand what a necessary condition and what a sufficient condition is, and therefore to understand the difference between them is by taking a very, very simple example. Okay. So first let's go through the example. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to let you read the, the very simple question that you see in front of you. So obviously this is not a GMAT like question, but this is good enough for us to understand what exactly do I mean by necessary condition? sufficient condition. And once we understand what those conditions are, we will see how that applies to GMAT CR assumption. Now, you can pause the video here and go through this question for a minute. I'll mute, uh, yeah. So all of us guys, pause the video here and take a gander at the question. All right, I hope you had a chance to go through the question. So with that, Let's move on with the discussion with the analysis and we shall see what are necessary and sufficient conditions. Yeah. Okay. So what do we have? We have Wharton. Okay. And we saw <clears throat> that to get into the Wharton program, you needed two things. What are the two things that you needed? Yeah. Well, you needed above average profile and you needed a minimum GMAT score of 700. Okay, great. And then there comes Peter, all right, good old Peter has come about, and we know that he has a stellar profile. Stellar profile is obviously above average, so guess what? Peter checks this box, good for him. But we don't know anything about his GMAT score. But what do we know? That this guy, Peter, is actually going to make it to Wharton. Which means, one way or another, he's meeting both conditions, right? Which means that he, therefore, has a minimum GMAT score of 700. Otherwise, he wouldn't be getting in, right? Um, and the conclusion would fall flat. Okay, now consider these two options, all right? Just give me a second, guys. Yep. Now consider these two options in front of you. These two statements, rather. Yep. I want you to take, I want you to, in fact, pause the video and consider these two for a few seconds, for maybe a minute. Okay. Now that you have considered these two statements, which one do you think uh, could be an assumption? See, because this is not stated, right? Therefore, uh, one of them has to be an assumption because it's not stated, but it is something that the conclusion depends on, right? Now, based on what we discussed, we know that Peter has a minimum score of 700. The first step statement tells us that he has a GMAT score of 700 or more. So basically, that means 
as good as basically having a minimum score of 700 because you see if you have a score of 700 itself or more that means at least 700 which is exactly as per this condition right on the other hand let's look at statement number two peter has a score above 700 above which means 700 itself is not the score that peter has now let's analyze if peter has a score of above 700 does he get into wharton well yes he does if peter has a score of 700 or more is that also good enough for peter to get into wharton yes again it is now what's the difference therefore between these two statements you see the point is 700 or more this is a bare minimum okay this condition includes the bare minimum score that you need to get it to work on the other hand two the statement number two is sort of telling us let's listen peter has done even better peter has gone above 700 it's almost like this statement too if that happens that is really good to have that 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 really makes it you know makes life easy for peter it makes it sufficient for peter to get into what whereas the first statement is almost showing us the necessity the bare minimum that must happen for peter to get into what therefore guys what you have over here is of statement one being a necessary condition with statement two being a sufficient condition okay statement one if statement one does not happen think of it this way statement one doesn't happen but peter doesn't get into one because if statement one does not happen what does that mean peter does not have a gmat score of 700 or more mm, you don't get into what buddy but let's try and negate statement two peter does not have a score above 700 which means that maybe he has the score of just 700 so maybe he meets the minimum criteria which means that he can still get into what so the point being that even if the sufficient condition does not happen peter can still get in the conclusion can still hold on the other hand what we saw is if the necessary condition doesn't happen no he doesn't get into what the conclusion does not hold all right so let's keep that in mind for now with regards to necessary and sufficient conditions and i think many of you might already have an inkling as to how this relates to assumption but let's see let's connect the dots further with the next slide so guys what does all of this have to do with assumptions well assumptions are necessary conditions guys whenever you're facing an assumption cr questions understand that the author is basically looking for the necessary condition for the conclusion to be true okay now why is it a pain point why is it a commonly observed pain point seems rather simple right it's a pain point because the gmat can be cruel sometimes and what to do often in 700 level questions is they will have two options one of the option being the necessary assumption but they will also have another option which is a sufficient condition and guess what it can get tricky especially under the pressure timing timing pressure because you might see understand why you fall for this trap or you might fall for this trap your focus while solving assumption question is on ensuring that okay let me choose that option that will make the conclusion come true and yeah that is the right focus okay but in doing so we kind of don't check for whether let's say th there are two options and both seem to make the conclusion come true at that time we do not always check whether one of those conditions is sort of a sufficient one while the other one might be a necessary one since all of our focus is just to ensure that you know what we kind of miss out on checking whether uh, these two close options um, maybe are different on the basis of uh, necessary versus sufficient all right so the point to take away is whenever you see something happening like this two options both seem to make the conclusion come true really ask yourself okay which one is the bare minimum the necessary one 
which one sort of goes beyond and is a sufficient condition. Okay. With that, guys, I want to quickly take you so, uh, to the next slides where I'll be basically giving you some homework questions. Okay. Some questions um, where you can basically apply this concept. All right. Also, a small teaser for you guys, uh, the questions that you'll see uh, in the homework. So for all of those questions, uh, and this is uh, entirely applicable for assumption, I will show you a trick, a technique uh, that you can use to, first off, always get assumption questions correct. And especially this technique will be useful when you have uh, two options, one of them being necessary and another being sufficient, okay? I'll even drop the name uh, of the technique is called trial by negation. So uh, that's just a teaser for you, but we will put that technique into use when we solve these questions. So stay tuned for the solutions of the questions. So without further ado, let's go into those questions. Yeah. All right, there you go. Now, this is actually an official GMAT question. As you can see, I have removed three of the options. That's because I did not want you to get distracted with other options. I want you to first read the stimulus, obviously, and then try and select one of these two choices. Obviously, you can understand that one of them would be a sufficient choice and the other unnecessary assumption, okay? Uh, but again, um, for this first question, I purely want you to be able to differentiate between what could be a necessary condition vis-a-vis -vis what could be a, a sufficient condition, okay? After this, so I'll, I'll, you can pause the screen over here, take a screenshot for this one. Um, all right, I hope you have taken a screenshot. Let's move on to the second homework question. Guys, now this one is also an official question, but I have given you the entire thing over here, okay? So again, um, we will see where one might be a sufficient condition in this question, another being necessary. So again, please pause, take a screenshot, take a jab at, uh, take a jab at the question. And yep, I hope you have taken the screenshot. With that, let's go to the final homework question. This question is actually a very nice question. And it's a, it's a GMAT West question, guys. Okay, this is one of our questions. So again, pause, take a screenshot, and try to solve this. In all of these questions, we are basically testing this necessary versus assumption pain point in, in assumption questions, all right? Now, guys, um, that is pretty much it for this video. Stay tuned for the solutions of these three questions. It will become, the, the solutions will also be released very soon, okay? I hope that was a nice tidbit for you guys. I hope that was a very cool learning for you guys. Try to apply them to these three questions and then tune in for the solutions to see whether you were able to apply the concept. It's a very, very commonly tested concept in assumption. All right, guys, I hope you liked it. And again, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing to our channel uh, and consider liking this video. Uh, for more content, subscribe. Thank you, guys.